Hey, thanks for checking in on Bathtub Sir and welcome back to Pyre. Last episode we took Tizu the Peculiar Drive Imp into battle and we beat Ashpaw and his gang in another riot. So we can continue our journey. We're flying through these riots, we're doing very, very well. We've got quite the crew together now. So come dawn, you find Hedwin and Jodavril assessing the current situation with the minstrel. Are you most certain? Aye, madam, I make no claim the journey shall be pleasant, but it is necessary. Hedwin motions to you as they continue talking. Seems we'll have some work to do once we arrive in flagging hands. Let's get going. As soon as you're ready, sooner we get there, sooner we can leave. Very, very true, Hedwin. I mean, it's a little bit obvious, but it still holds true. So we're going to go to flagging hands. It's meant to be a horrible, horrible place. The lone minstrel knows a relatively safe route down into the flagging hands region. Okay, we're putting a lot of trust into the lone minstrel, but he hasn't given us any reason not to so far. So hopefully this would all be okay. I think we're sort of leaving the arid area of the uh, the Joma Valley, was it called? Flagging hands, look at this place. Looks almost acidic in parts. I wouldn't eat any of them mushrooms. Are they red mushrooms there? Consider how to proceed. Right, and there's none more we can chat to in here, is there? That's a little bit strange. We usually have someone to talk to. Okay, well, let's consider how to proceed. The Flagging Hands region proves as dismal as Jodoril indicated. The air is thick and foul. How far to the pit of Malif? Is that how you'd say that? I guess so. All the way across the marshlands, on the coast. Reader, would you join me in the wagon for a moment? We have a matter to discuss. Jodoril and Hedman exchange looks, then she turns to you. Go see what he wants. Um, yeah, we were gone. I didn't need you to tell us, Jodoril. <gasps> what is this? Is that a celestial orb? Thank you for your time, reader. I have something for you, on behalf of my client. Before you is an artifact called the Beyonder Crystal. An ancient artifact connected to the rites. Should the reader manage in your eyes, present the crystal only then. Message to the lone minstrel. Interesting, what would this do? Okay. You observe a shimmering crystal of some sort beside the Book of Rites. As you have surmised, the triumvirates you are to confront during the rites shall stop at nothing to prevail against you. They have prepared for this for quite some time. The Beyonder Crystal may help ensure that you are well prepared in turn. It is a resource now at your disposal, to be used at your discretion. Gaze upon it, and you shall see what I mean. Right, okay. Henceforth you may use the Beyonder Crystal. It is calling to you. So, at a glance, this sounds like somewhere we can sort of practice our moves, practice our, um... See, I keep wanting to call it combat, but the riots, they're not combat, are they? It's like a, a game of basketball in a weird way. Right, so... The Beyonder Crystal seeks Rookie. The hell does that mean? A Shimmering Crystal, yep. Interact. You look upon the shimmering surface of the beyond the crystal, some of your senses fail, though you retain a hold over your consciousness. Well, that's always good. You don't want to go fainting in the black wagon. <gasps> oh, God. <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. I gasped, but I don't really have a clue why. An apparition appears before you, clad in the raiments of the rites, but incorporeal. I don't know what that means. I sense that you are not a total idiot. She reaches for the clasps on her mask. Wow, who's this? So the Nightwings have returned. Oh, but where are my manners? You must be their lovely reader. Please, call me Sandra. Hey Sandra, the Unseeing. She is a wraith, expelled for eternity within the Beyond the Crystal, and bound to serve the rites. So, kind of like a genie? Is she good or bad? She looks a little bit bad, I'll be honest. We met briefly before, when you first beheld the book, when you were stuck inside of it. I was among the phantoms, your companions banished there, no doubt stroking their egos. You listened well enough to that damned voice. Now I suggest you listen well to me. Oh, the narrator. Described within the book, it calls to you during the rites and reminds you of your exile. Yeah, he's a little bit, um... Well, he's not there to, for a pep talk, is he? I am bound in servitude to you, along with any idiots whose freedoms happen to be intertwined with yours. I know the rites better than anyone. I soon can whip you into shape if you but take advantage of my services. First, I offer scribe trials to those friends of yours if they can pass, it will be worth their while and yours. Okay, so these are Sandra's series of special challenges, custom tailored for each of your fellow exiles. Is that hinting at what the Rookie message was about? So Rookie could do a scribe trial? Secondly, my Beyonders and I avail ourselves for the practice rites. 
should you be so inclined? Okay, so is this what I was um, guessing? A spectral called Triumvirate, banished for eternity, and trapped within the rites, led by the wraith called Sandra the Unseen. So that's her, her gang, and we can fight them in practice rites. No strings, training, competitions, beyond your fellow exiles, and Sandra's beyond us. Yeah, okay, I think I hit that now on the head. Or you could always come and chat, and briefly free me from an eternity of boredom, hmm? You have invoked Sandra from beyond the crystal, what do you wish to do? I think we may try a scribe trial. Um, it's either going to be that or ask what's in our mind, but the scribe trial sounds pretty interesting, so let's do it. I want to see what we win. Indeed, it looks as though one of those failures of yours is ready for a lesson in pain. Ooh, she's a, a believer of tough love, I think. Who shall brave one of Sandra's scribe trials? <laughs> and why can't I say scribe trials eloquently? Rookie, right? It's got to be a rookie. Shall we give him this back? Because we did take it off him because he wouldn't fight the uh, curse. Alright, Rookie, you're up. You asked Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Rookie. What? That loudmouthed cur? Well, I suppose that he is ready, technically. Though, I have a li litany of reservations about him. But, let us bring him forth. Soon, Rookie appears, in heed of the summons. Uh, chump, why are you looking at me like that? Uh-oh, I hope we don't do any harm to Rookie. He's still my favourite. Curves such as Rookie Green Tail are exceptionally quick, yep. Though they tend to deal less damage, right, okay. That's good to know. Right, you ready for this? Alright, what's the big idea, huh? Is this some kind of trick you're playing, chum? The apparition Sandra then appears and unfastens her mask. Shut your snout and listen well, Kerr. You answer to me here. Huh? What? Your mouth runs quicker than those stubby little paws. You have much to learn if you have any intent to prevail in the rites. Let's see how you fare without the benefit of your trusted comrades, save for your lovely reader. Uh, I guess it's you and me then, huh, chum? Wherever you are. Whoa, they're big. It's a triple big threat right there. Get there, get there. No! Well, that's stupid. Okay, so that is not good. <laughs> Oh god, how much should we get from that? 15. So we get half of what they do. No! <laughs> 10 left. There's no way we're doing this, is there? That was awful. Really, really bad there. <laughs> oh no, I'm gutted. That was so tough. Oh, damn it. As expected, this cur is fleet of poor, but rather slow of wit. I would tell you not to waste my time, Kerr, but the truth is that my time is there for you to waste. Perhaps you think you could do better, hmm? Oh, we're definitely going to try that again. That was awful. <laughs> oh, that one again? We shall see if he fares any better this time. Right, this time we know exactly what we're up against. So I'm hoping we can do much better. Oh, no. That's not good. God, I forgot they can lunge at us. Oh, so close, so close, nearly took him out. Another awful start. So it doesn't work if we try and take the orb first. Okay, if we take this guy out, then they're all gone. Go, go, he slides around. No, dropped. Move out of the way. Right, that's you done. Oh, did we get him? We did. Jump. Sweet, we made it. Still, there's a lot more to go from there. We need to get it, what, another three times? Why don't we go for a jump? Sweet. Seems terrible at jumping over it. That seems to be a big problem as well. Come on. Yes, double jump. And we made it. That was a close one. Just around the back of them. Okay, we're doing a lot better. If we can just get this last point, we would have beat the first trial. It's a bit of an added challenge. Okay, go for it. We've made it. We've did it. Get in there. <laughs> really doesn't help if you run past the pyre. Rookie, you prevailed. Well done, buddy. Hopefully we get a ton of XP for that. That is how we do it, right, chum? It is, and you acknowledge, likewise, that you did not do it on your own, despite having to face my demon friends all by yourself. You passed my test, Kerr. Congratulations are in order, both to you and to your lovely reader. Now farewell. 
Awesome. What did we get? What did we get? A sentence into exile and a downside is a sentence for life. Oh, man. I'd hate to stay here for eternity. Okay, so is it just an XP reward, do you reckon? That Sandra Kaza gives me the shakes. Know what I mean, chum? Hey, what's that you got? You received Joma's Fang for completing Ruki's trial. Brilliant. It's a rank 5 legendary talisman. After Ruki casts his aura, it lingers longer than usual at 200%. What the hell? Okay, so it's the, the attack thing, isn't it? Gnashing his teeth and howling as with joy, the brazen Alpha Chief threw himself at danger. We'll take it. And can we equip it right now? So it means we'd have to swap out this. But, oh, we're not level 5 yet, are we? Oh, we are. Okay, so maybe it doesn't matter what rank you are. It's what rank this talisman is. Only he's ruled by Ruki. That's brilliant. So how about we give this to Hedwin, maybe? And then, can we go back into this? I'd love to do another trial. You called for me again? Request for a scribe trial. Oh, we can't at the moment. Oh no, I don't want to do a practice right. That's not good. We won't do a practice right. Okay, that's better. We got out of the practice right. I didn't mean to go in there. I think we've got enough practice. So, now we know what Sandra's all about, should we carry on with our journey? And I don't know when we'll get the chance to do another tri um, scribe trial, but they seem very beneficiary because that item Rookie got seems awesome. We'll have to try it in our next right. So let's continue. You find everyone is feeling rather miserable. You sense just being in flagging hands eats away at one's spirit. Only the imp Tizu seems unaffected. Most of your fellow exiles lost one hope for the next right. That's not good. Except for Tizo. Suffer alongside them. Brilliant. <laughs> A moment, reader. There are several courses we may take through flagging hands. If you choose to prolong your stay, it may be worth your while. However, your companion's spirits shall likely suffer more. Right, so we sacrifice spirits for a potential um, like item. The Lone Minstrel says you can get a valuable item if you take a job here at Cold Moat, which is the north route through Flagging Hands, and it crosses a mass grave. That sounds horrible. And then there's Plaguemont, the middle route through Flagging Hands, cut straight to the pit of Milith. Hedwin suggests taking this faster route will reduce your companion's loss of hope. And Fallowfield, oh, the Minstrel says you can improve a talisman if you take a job here. South route through Flagging Hands crosses diseased and wilted plants. I think we're gonna go cold moat, you know. Nothing sounds more appealing than a mass grave. But I mean the offer of a of a valuable item sounds good to me. We are sacrificing everyone's spirits, but we'll go for it. I hope you made the right decision. I'm not too sure what the hope stat does, which is so sort of my decision is sort of based on ignorance. We'll see. The North Fruit through Flagging Hands is dismal beyond reckoning. There is little talk among your group, yet you sense despair encroaching. Only Tizo seems unaffected. So yet we lost some more hope. <laughs> That's minus two now. Later, you accompany the lone minstrel in pursuit of his task here. Speak not directly to the living shade, and be true to your heart while responding when responding to its inquiries. And make no attempt to look it in the eye. What the hell? The Lone Minstrel offers these and other words of advice as you approach the burial mounds of Cold Moat, where many exiles of the downside see their fi final days. A glimmer of a shade appears before you as you stand surrounded by the dead. You barely see it, and it does not speak, but you feel its thoughts piercing your heart and mind. According to the shade, the book that you possess may lay some of the fallen here to rest. The shade leads you to your work. You turn through the book, locating passages concerning freedom and the spirit. You recite such words as seem best fit to each of the fallen you see. It is draining work. The shade resurfaces after a while. It leads you to a hollowed stump and fades away. Okay, and we found Nox Room. You quickly put it away. It looks like a legendary item, right? Because of its colour? Maybe not. This can be sold at the slug market. A seething bit of fungus which holds value to certain denizens of the downside. It's only worth 50 gold. I don't know if this was totally worth it. I was rather hoping we'd find a talisman. But hey, beggars can't be choosers, we'll uh, make do with what we got. By the time you reach the pit of Milith, everyone besides the Imp Tizo seems to be feeling even worse than before. You sense their desire to leave this place as soon as possible. Most of your fellow exiles- oh that's another hope gone! <laughs> Prepare for the right anyway. What does hope do? This attribute affects the duration of banishment. Right, and that's when- how quickly they can respawn. So it looks like it's going to be taking them a while to return, which is a little bit scary. We've also had a page revealed, and we can head to the slug market. 
Oh hey you guys, you know, this place, a lot of folks, but not a lot of customers, you know what I mean? So have a look around. Hey Ron, he's got a lot of new stuff, a dash of star dust, uh, star dust. raises the rank of certain talismans plus two. It's usable once. Scribe rock, grants the bearer two plus presence. Is there anything for hope? There is. Faith stone. Bit of polished stone that made it all the way here from the other side and could one day perhaps return. So I'm thinking of buying the faith stone and equipping it to someone. I mean, I need to consider who we're taking out. I think we're going to take Hedwin, because he's got the instant respawn talisman now. We're going to take out Ruki, because he's got the uh, he's got the new talisman, and we want to see what that's like. And I'm thinking maybe Tizzo, because he um, he uh, he's not affected by this place. But then, if we buy this, then we can't equip the talisman with Hedwin. Hmm. It's, a, it's going to be a tough decision actually, so maybe I'll save my money for now and just take out the team I, I said there. Should we sell this? This can be sold. Are we meant to sell it or are we meant to hold on to it? What does Ron say if we give it to him? Whatever, we'll 117? Why not? I hope we haven't been too hasty there in selling it. They're leaving, Dad. Just look at how much we got this time. <laughs> Okay, right, well, let's head in here and someone to talk to as well. It's Jodoril. We haven't spoken to her in a while, it seems. You sense Jodoril's still gaze well before you turn to her. Reader, rummaging about the wagon once again. Tell me something. Now that you are here, look at me. Are you afraid of me? You consider the question. You have never before met someone like her, but you do know something of what happens to those who remain in the downside for many years. Jodoril wishes to know if you fear her. Um, admit she can be a bit intense. I think that's true. We're not exactly scared of her, but she's very, like, yeah, intense is the perfect word, I suppose. So let's be upfront with her and see how she reacts to that. You tell her in a careful way that you have done your best thus far to not cross paths with her and wish to stay in her good graces. Indeed, it is comforting to know that my mere presence instills fear. One day, perhaps, you too shall grow some horns if you survive this place. That day shall put the fear you feel in some perspective. Now then. I shall make, I shall go make my rounds. Right, do the horns grow if you spend a long time in downside? That's horrifying. She walks away. You feel the floor of the wagon shake with her step. Oh, bollocks, she lost one hope again. <laughs> so we definitely shouldn't take Joe to real. It says for the next right, so I'm hoping it's not permanent stat loss. We've got a new page. And this would be the Emperor's Collapse, right? The Rope Caller. Have we read this one? <laughs> okay, yeah, we have read that one. I think it is this. In the words of Gol Golathian, the Master General. Okay, let's get a better look at this. It was not long before the Empire began to crumble. With my liege gone, his own country quickly turned upon itself. I must admit that this collapse had started long before the Emperor's disappearance. His decision to give chase after a myth but hastened the inevitable. All the while, the rope caller stood by, awaiting such a time as he could rule in my liege's stead. He would be our people's saviour. His first charge was to organise a search for the missing Solium Mur. Warriors, pathfinders, and scholars heard the call and prepared to seek him out. I wonder how many pages there are to this book, because if this is only chapter one, there's a lot to go, isn't it? Right, well, let's head out and prepare for our right. Who are we going to face this time? As you make preparations for the coming right, you wonder if the stars above will even be visible through the dense fog hanging over the pit of Malief. Then. Oh, what's Tizzo saying? Tizzo seems to be very concerned by something in the vicinity. The little imp disappears in a hurry. Oh, is Tizzo alright? He was so frightened. He was not frightened, he was issuing a warning. Silence, everyone. Take cover. Jodoril makes a quick note of several hiding places among the nearby crags and rotted husks. You wait. Something about the place dampens your senses. All you feel is a creeping dread. Oh, what is that thing? Then, from the shadows, a writhing shape slides forward, its hulking form draped in raiments. The shape stops. Slowly, its head turns from one of you to the next, each in turn. Wise of you to hide yourselves from us, little night wings. You trespass on the resting place of the astral born. We shall see you when the stars muster the courage to illuminate this place. The creature vanishes into the dark. After a time, your companions reconvene. That was a bog crone. Serpentine creatures native to the Commonwealth of Southern Bogs, widely feared. Though formerly part of the Commonwealth, the Bog Crones tend to keep to themselves. 
I imagine it's horrible underneath that mask as well. Indeed, that was Witch um, Unmardhi <laughs> of the Withdrawn. So she's an ancient witch with an unhealthy obsession for Slatch, the astral born monstrosity, and the Withdrawn must be her triumvirate of bog dwellers, compelled by sinister forces rather than by freedom. Oh god, we need to beat these people as quick as possible. What's Tizo got to say? Tizo makes clear he has no love for Umeldhi. Umeldhi. Although the rights dictate she cannot harm you bodily, with her, best not to take unnecessary chances. We'll take what chances we can get in all of this. Everyone, it's time. Okay, how are we going to do this? I don't know if we're taking a risk taking Tizo and Ruki, but we saw how much hope um, Jodoril has lost. She's lost the most more than anyone for this next one. So they're gaining enlightenment after each right, which is basically experience. That's fine. Why you made it, Rita. We did make it. Made it all the way to the detestable pit of Malief. Malief? What is that? So, Can't course. even tell what that carcass is. Disturbed your ancient adversaries. The withdrawn. The deranged witch who leads them has big plans in store. Should she prevail in all this? Now, as you know, I normally would wish you a shameful defeat. But in this case, I wish you a little bit of Oh luck. man, they must be bad if even that guy is wishing us luck against them. The crone of Mild, he sees your companions gathered by the pyre. A little flame as that shall never warn you here, warm you here, much less survive the night. Hear us, yes, I can't even say that word. <laughs> yes, Latch. <laughs> Make the night wings suffer. Ruki trots forward from your ranks. Listen here, you old bag. You don't scare any of us one bit. You or your buddies, Slatch. Now, we doing this or what? The question hangs in the air for longer than is comfortable. It does seem to have drawn <laughs> Yudmaldi's attention, however. Ruki begins to uh, squirm a bit. Then, Udmardhi moves her slender fingers to her mask. Oh no, she's going to remove the mask. We really don't want that. Foolish. Your slatch shall grow, your slatch shall grow, your slatch shall grow. Oh my god, I just noticed the face, it's horrible. It looks a little bit like Faye, but, you know, like plus 50 years or something. Is that horrible to say to poor Faye? He shall consume ye, ere your little flame has died, that we shall ensure. Um, Udmild, he slides off towards her followers. Ruki remains motionless for a time. Uh, whoops. Please don't lose any hope, Ruki. Right. Alright, so we're gonna go for Headwind again. Headwind. And then we're gonna go for Rookie. Try out this Joma's Fang. Hopefully that can take out some of the witches. And then we're gonna Oh god. Hope is 18. His hope is 19. Oh my god, Jojo has hope of five. So there's only one hope in it. Maybe we will take Faye, you know. There's nothing we can equip her with. Okay, let's try it. We're gonna risk it. Make a last minute change and take Faye. As the eight scribes once vanquished your slatch, so shall we prevail. No matter where you go, your slatch shall find you and devour you. Can you please stop putting that word in the dialogue? I'm really having such trouble trying to say it. Can't wait to beat these either. Oh, what is with the witch's aura? Come on then, let's do this. Ruki, you're up. Oh crap, oh crap. Can we make it? Yes, we just about got there. Bloody hell, that's a close one. Right, gotta take some of you out. Oh yes, we gotta... Oh, good dodge, Ruki. Oh my god, look at that. We'll take out the witch. Yes, brilliant. Okay, now run. Jump. Yes, we made it again. Nice one, Faye. That was a brilliant goal. Oh, okay, go, Rookie. And how's this looking? Oh, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Another goal. We are beating the crap out of these witches. The lifeblood of your slatch, it flows within this lair, and beneath this world, his lifeblood, it shall engulf you in such blackness and despair. What the hell does that mean? Oh crap, are they like horrible swamp pits? The witch 
Okay, a bit like Voldemort, I guess. And it blocks. Definitely blocks where we need to go. Come on, Ricky. Nice. Oh, no. Crap, they scored a goal. Bollocks. That's not good. They've made things a little bit difficult with this. Mooncrest. Okay, so we got back instantly. That's good. No, we scored another goal. Okay, I'm getting a little bit scared now, I'll admit. We need to get there first. Right, chuck it back. Go, Faye, go. We've made it, we've made it. Brilliant. Just one more goal, that's all we need. Come on, get the ball. Nope. Oh, thank God. And then can we do a double jump? Oh, we've made it. Yes. Thank God. Oh, no, we still haven't got enough because Rookie scored. And obviously, he scores less than the others. Can we get through that gap? No. Oh, the sods. Right, we just need to get five. And they've got 40 left. Look at them. They're making a wall. <laughs> need to get everyone up here. Now double jump? Yes! Oh my god, what a goal. That is the best goal of the whole game. Rookie absolutely smashed it there, buddy. Yes, we do. Oh, I'm so glad we beat these horrible, horrible people. Nice work, everyone. Never thought I'd have to stand against a bog dweller. See? Those bog dwellers, they're just a bunch of hissy talk. The scribes, they vanquished your, sl your slatch just as we prevailed tonight. You slatch, we have failed thee, and the deed shall be repaid in blood. As for ye, fools, ye shall be consumed, and everything around ye, from the soil to the stars, ye shall see. Please just stop talking, horrible witch. Nice, is that... I thought you might get more XP than that, Rookie, I'll be honest. But at least Faye went up a level. The scribes, they whisper to me, they do, from time to time. So, what level, what move do you want? The brief charge up time before Faye jumps or sprints is virtually eliminated. Okay, so instant jump or sprint. The brief charge up before, ah, oh, she uses her her attack. I mean, I think we use our attack more. Let's go with that. A devious trick from the rope collar. And Tizzo, did you get any XP? No, I don't think you did. Well, not enough to level up. Until the stars align. Okay, that's fun. That was a lot of fun. It was, um, the matches are getting tougher for sure, especially when they bring in sort of uh, unfair advantages. Right, so how's everyone feeling after that? Having vanquished or withdrawn in a solid performance, you and the others have some moments to recover from the ordeal in the relative safety of the Black Wagon. So, when can we get out of here? What, Greentown? Had enough of Udmardi's hospitality for the time? Oh, Jody. Yeah, thanks. I'm good. The reader and the stars will point the way, as ever. It's just so far we've kept on going north. If that's the case again this time, the Sea of Solace spreads north and west from here for untold leagues. I could not tell you when last a vessel dared to sail those waters. So the Sea of Solace isn't an impossible oce oceanic <laughs> expanse pockmarked by crude little islets. Attempts to sail across the drowned sea do not usually turn out so well. Tizzo asserts himself during the conversation. What is the matter, this one? Tizzo is trying to get you to come look at something outside the wagon. Reader, please go see what he wants. You excuse yourself and follow the imp into the dark of night. You find Faye and the lone minstrel already gazing up at the stars. Can you not read the stars yourself then, Mr. Minstrel? I fear it is not so simple as matters of can or cannot when it comes to me, Faye. We shall see what the reader has to say, for this is his charge. And here he is, in fact. Thank you for fetching him, Tizzo. Tiso is happy to oblige the lone minstrel. Reader, it would seem the skies have cleared to some extent. Please look upon the stars and see what they compel us, where they compel us to go next. Right, so we can seek our destination, but I noticed time is getting on a bit, so I think we're going to have to leave this episode there before we see where we're heading next. Um, I mean, the hardest thing about this episode was trying to pronounce all the damn words. 
horrible, horrible words that I have no right in trying to say. But anyway, if you enjoyed this episode of Pi, please go ahead and leave a like. It helps out a great deal, and I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to see more, we'll seek out our next destination and take on our next try, and hopefully be triumphant. So go ahead and subscribe, I'll bring that to you. Got any comments you want to raise? Maybe you can give me some tips on how to say much, like a bunch of these words, because they're really, really hard to get my tongue around. But leave a comment below, and I'll make sure I get back to you. Alright, see you.